Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Real Talk Live with Arnette D. Love. And y'all know I have my sister, my assistant, my homegirl, Miss Alicia. And listen, we want to just say happy Father's Day to you guys out there. Listen, I know for some of you it's, it's easy and for some of you it's difficult, but we just want to give you your praises on today. Happy Father's Day to you. I got on my queen shirt because our father, he participated in producing four queens and here are two of the four. And so we just want to talk about fathers today. Lisa, go ahead. What you got to say to the fathers? Oh, happy Father's Day. Thank you for helping us make beautiful children, you know. Um, what do you want the topic to be about? Well, the topic is about the fathers, baby. It depends on what fathers you talk about. Hey, listen. Uh, see, I have, I have a father, my husband, okay. that took on five children ready-made family he was very young but to this day 21 years later he is their father he's a good father we had to learn and grow together on that and that takes a strong man that takes a, what i would call a kids. real man um to be able to take on somebody else's kids not alone one but five of them and become their father figure or their father actually and, and love them the way that their biological father would um you know so to me that that's hats off that's that's to be um commended for someone to be able to do that and let me um do this because i forgot to tell you but yeah y'all can call in 757-724-1041 let me get the phone right now and y'all can call us and join into our talk story session today about fathers. And you know, I just want to say, some people, let me tell you about my father here, okay? My father, my child life with my father, our father before she um, was with us. We, my mother raised three kids, five six, two, we all were by the same man, her husband, and she raised three of us alone. And we long for our father. We wanted him, you know, um, no, to have access to him. We wanted to have access to him when we wanted to have access to him. When, we, as we were growing and other people were able to, you know, have their father with them. We didn't have our father, but we had a surrogate. We had my uncle. We called Uncle P. Hey, Uncle P. Happy Father's Day, man. And so we had him, and he would step up. Uh, during you know father daughter dances and um, whatever we had um, that we needed a father we would have a peak and so you know time after time we called for our father to do certain things to participate in certain things in our life and um, I, I don't I think he understood the magnitude of not showing up or you know not taking it and you know as a um, event of importance because what ended up happening as we got older we got used to um, him not showing up disappointment and it became where we never we stopped inviting him we stopped asking for him you know it didn't come it wasn't a um, what you call um, a necessity to have him there and so as we got older that's what it was and, and so now he doesn't get the invites to big things in our lives anymore and I don't think he understands why you know so this is our point one for you fathers out there when your children call on you to participate in things that are happening in their lives please participate in the things that are happening in their lives and things that are important to them excuse me y'all it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Because it might be minor to you, but to them, it's the whole world. And if they invite you, they want to see their father there. So do not give them the opportunity to cut you off um, in their future life. Meaning, 
when they stop calling on you, when they stop including you. Don't let that happen. I don't care who you're with. Let her, if she doesn't want to be a part of your children's life for real, you tell her, listen, I need to take some time out for my kids. I'm going to talk to my babies. I'm going to see them. I will see you when I get back. And, and because a lot of times it be the, the mother of a child that your significant other is concerned with, but you as the father got to put your foot down and let her know, listen, I'm with you, but right now it's about my babies. It's not even about you. I was honest with you. I told you I had kids, and I'm going to be their daddy. I'm the only daddy they need to know, and you're going to have to go and participate in their lives so that's what because that's what they're going to remember so that's your first tip on this talk story make time for your kids when they call you you need to go and i know you're not going to be available for every last event but let your kids know this time daddy can't come but i'm coming this way make some of the events okay Make sure you do that. You got a um, story for them and then a tip for them? Just because you're not the biological father, you are a father. Once you take on that role and you say, I accept you and your children, that means you're taking a fatherly role. You know, so that child is dependent on, those children are dependent on you to be their guide, to be their mentor, to be there for them when it's a question that they can't go to mother for, you know. Um, and a lot of, you know, and I, I know this might touch some chords, but women, we can't use our children, you know, to attack their father. We, we cannot do that. We can't, oh, well, you won't see your child. You ain't got to worry about seeing your child or, you know, don't worry about this. And we can't take our emotions and tear a relationship apart between a father and their children. That's point two. Okay, but that's to the mothers. Mm -hmm. that's, the that's, that's to the mothers. Um, so we want to give the fathers a tip. So what's your tip to the fathers for what you just said? And y'all, I'm checking messages. What's your tip to the father? <laughs> the same tip you give them, to be there. You know, um, a lot of guys feel like if they paying child support, they don't have to be there because that's enough support. No, they need mental support. They need physical support. They need you to be able to take them places, show them things, not just because you pay child support that that's all the support they need. You know, to be honest with you, I'd rather have the company of my father than have the money. Well, I'd rather have the company of my father when I was younger than whatever it was that he probably won't pay it. I'd rather have that. But now I done got so used to not having a father, except for my uncle Pete and my stepfather when I got older. Well, I was grown, and you know what I'm saying? And, so you're not uh, pushing them away? I didn't push them away. Or you became distant? No, I didn't become distant. You don't he was think gone. Distant? He was gone. See, it's a difference when he was there. He wasn't there. You can't push a person away that wasn't there. And I don't want to bash my father because I love him dearly. But I, we're trying to give you situation, different situations. Now, what you were saying, and we're going to come back to that. What you were saying about don't um, the relationship with the mother, or mothers don't use the kids for your father. Let me reverse that and give another tip to the fathers. Fathers don't allow the mother of your child to use your child against you to where you're not in their lives. That's another a second tip. Don't allow the mother to do that to you. You be persistent about your child to the point where if you have to go to court to get um, some kind of visitation. That's what you do. Fight for your child. Let them know that um, that, hold on, y'all. I got a call by from a father. Hold on. I don't know if I'm putting him on live. Hold on. <laughs> but, yeah. So, what I was saying about my um, father, he wasn't there. There was nothing to push away. Okay? There was nobody to push away because he wasn't there. We're going to get this caller on the line. 
then he wasn't there. And so I didn't have to push him away. I just left him alone. But did you feel yourself being distant? Hey, you so silly. I'm doing my show. You want to come on my show? Right now, I'm going to be talking about Father's Day. I can put you on speakerphone. <laughs> so you can give that male opinion advice. You gonna be a guest on my show? Uh, uh huh. Oh, are you? Are you are? That's what I want you to do. All right. <laughs> well, listen. Happy Father's Day to you. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. I know you know. <laughs> so I'll call you. Since you don't want to be on the show today, I'm going to call you after the show. Because I, I, we, you and I do I do have a bone to pick with you, sir. S sir Daddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you, bye. Oh, y'all, that was one of the fathers. Uh, but he didn't want to get on the show, but he will be on the show soon. So um, we'll be looking forward to that show. My goodness. But listen, so with, with that, he wasn't there with us. And so when we would invite him, when he, he wouldn't come, um, a lot of times we would call and we, we didn't get to talk to him or the phone number would be changed. And so what happened is we got used to him not being around. You know, and so then when he wanted to be around, we were so used to him not being around. So that caused you not to be close to him. Well, I mean, how could you? He wasn't around. But I'm okay. So now, if he wants that, well, I'm comfortable now. I'm in my that's comfortable that, that's, And that's what I'm saying. But you have to be willing to compromise. No, it's no he's compromise. Willing to give you See, that time that's, now. No, ma'am. You have See, to let. This is fathers. This is what I'm see. saying. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. You set the stage for your children. And when you set the stage for your children and they get comfortable at a certain stage, there, sometimes there's no coming back to what you want. That's there's true. no closeness. I, and you can relate to that. I, I know you can. Yes, I can. So it's no, you have to be willing to negotiate. No, you I don't. You know how they say uh, older folks are set in their ways? I, you know, your children become set in their ways. So if there's distance there and, you know, they get they get used to not having you around, that's what it happens. So when you come around, they're uncomfortable because you're in their space. Yeah, you train a child the way they should go, right? Remember that scripture. And what happens is when you train a child that you're not going to be in their lives, they get used to the fact that you're not going to be in their lives. So when they get older and most of the time they be grown or older teenagers, you want to come back and be in their lives, it'd be too late because in their mind they have accepted the fact that my father is not in my life. I know who my father is. I love my father, but we really don't have a relationship. And so I'm fine with that now. At some point you get at peace. See, as a child, um, I used to cry over my daddy. See, people didn't know that. I'm a strong woman now, but as a child I was broken. And I used to cry and cry and cry. And, and I used to be like, why my daddy don't want me? I, the rejection was real, y'all. And, and, and so what happened, my mother stepped in when she realized what was happening. And that's when she taught me com, you know, um, confirmations. Remember, people doing that now with their kids? Mama was doing it way back in the, in the day when I used to cry and be like, why my daddy don't want me and, and I'm ugly and I'm this and that. I thought, you know what I'm saying? And my mom was like, first of all, nothing's ugly about you because you came from me, you know? And then my mom would make me stand in front of the mirror for hours and tell myself how pretty I am and for hours and tell you know myself if they don't want to be around me, that's good for me because they're no good for me anyway. Stuff like that, you know, if they don't want to be in my presence, good because I don't need them. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody but God and mama. God and mama. That's all I needed. You see what I'm saying? And that is what I was doing as a child to get over the fact that my father basically wasn't there in my life. And so 
after enough of that therapy, because that's what it was, you know, we don't do therapy. You know, y'all know how we do what we should get out of, away from that, because there's nothing wrong with therapy. But y'all know back in the 70s and 80s, we weren't doing no therapy. So my mom gave me therapy at home, and that therapy made me stronger. And that therapy made me to where I don't need anybody in my life that don't want to be there. And that's why it's so easy for me to walk away from you. When you show me that you don't want to be bothered, I give you what you want. And guess what happens when you give people what they want? They can't take it. They can't understand why this person treats me like this. I don't treat you like anything. I gave you what you wanted. You told me to mind my business. I'm minding my business. And minding my business means through everything, through your life events, through through your marriage, through your children, through your parties, through your get-ups and your get-downs. I mind my business. And so you think I'm being nasty, but all I'm doing is what you told me to do. And for some reason, us as women or children, young girls, we more so look to our fathers. We, we want our fathers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is, just like for some reason, and this just may be my opinion, mothers seem to cling more to their sons, mm -hmm. you know? And, and me, I was just, you know, just want that, 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 you know, because who can teach you how to be loved by a man? You know, but yeah. a, a man himself, you know, he can tell you when to watch out for the game, the game plan. You know, I had to learn on my own. When I, yeah. Oh, I, ooh, I, ooh, Jesus, I almost. <laughs> most of the time when you have to learn on your own is trial and error. And by the time we done messed up so much, when all we really needed was our father to tell us how what we should be looking out for mm -hmm. and guiding us through relationships and saying, hey, you're not going to do him. You're not going to mess with him. I don't want to see him ever again. Bad intentions. See, because you know your father can pick that out because most of the time the, the guy that you bring home, most of the time they like your father. Most of the time. And so, but I didn't have that. And I guess Leisha didn't either. We, we didn't have that. And so I didn't have nobody protecting me. You know what I'm saying? Besides my mom. Now, I know my dad loved me. See, like she I said, my I'm, other dad. My dad that passed away, I, I knew he loved me. You know, that's why I said it don't take you to be a biological father to be a father. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I said, I'm not a materialistic person. Love, that's what I was looking for. And regardless of whatever he did or went through, he always made sure to show me love. Right. And I felt it. That's why I was so hurt when he passed away because to me, he was the only man that really showed me love through my childhood. Now, I got a good husband, so I can't take that, you know, mm -hmm. away from him because my husband loves me unconditionally. We have mm -hmm. been through ups and downs. And now, like I said, not only is he a good father, he's a good husband, mm -hmm. you know. But it took me a, a few times, you know, third time's a charm, baby. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you. Well, if I could just get one. I found <laughs> you so picky. <laughs> <laughs> if you were so picky, you might have you one or two or three. You know, choose from. <laughs> we might have to do our own little bachelorette jank for you. Oh Lord, how much? Oh, a, a, a match, a match, uh, show. Yeah, right? absolutely. That would sound real good. When I get, you know, I bring like three men up here, and I get to choose behind the curtain. Yep, you get Ooh. to ask questions, and I have to, well, I ask the questions, and and they give the answers, Ooh, and then you pick good. your one for your date. That better yeah, look good because I don't do no chop suit. You ain't going to be walking around and have me looking like chop suit. I don't care what I look like. You're going to have to be fine when I look at you. But anyway, that's another story. We're going to work and on she, that. She like him tall, so just so you know. Ooh, I do that. Okay. But we're going to work on that. But but for real, seriously, seriously, um, what you were saying, you know, it doesn't take a real father. Like with my stepfather, let me say that. My stepfather was like, it's the best stepfather. And, and he never came in trying to be our father. Because first of all, we were older. We were pretty much grown. I might have had my baby. He was a baby or whatever. But we were pretty much grown. And so he never came in trying to be a stepfather. But if it was something he didn't like, he went to my mom. And because we had respect for my mother, my mama didn't play. She didn't play, but she raised us. So we definitely had respect. We didn't talk back and all that stuff like that. We might judge a little bit to a certain extent. Um, but we did not disrespect mama. So what happened was when our stepfather would say something and that he didn't like what we may have done or something, he would tell her and she would come and say, well, your stepfather said blah, 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 blah. And that means you need to react, respond, or stop. 
you know, and that's what we did. And so all of his directions or his directives came through mama because he respected the fact that we didn't, we weren't raised with a father. So all of his directives came through mama and then, you know, eventually we were, he was able to say stuff to us directly because he had never told us anything out of the way when he would send messages through mom. So we had a level of respect for him that when he spoke, he spoke with truthness, you know, he spoke really and what he said is right. And so he was able to come and say stuff to us directly. He know my attitude, you know, sometimes I can be a little hot headed and so can he. So what happens is he um, can relate to a lot of the things that I'm feeling, you know, when I get off on my little rocker and start, you know, having an attitude, you know, saying, and so he can bring me back down and be like, you know, think about this, 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 and this. That's a stuff, father. That's somebody that's showing you love and redirecting you with love. Because Not, if they didn't, excuse me, mm -hmm, they right. wouldn't care. They wouldn't say anything. Right, right. They wouldn't say anything. Right. And you have a lot of people that, because they got that position of stepfather, they won't think they can say anything out of their mouth. They think they can just pull up and be the father. You could never be my daddy. I love my daddy, but you can be a um, father figure. You know what I'm saying? See, we never, my mother never taught us. And ladies, this, 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 is, this is for you. And men, this is for you as well. This is another tip for you. Be careful who you have children by. Mm. Be careful who you have children by. You are choosing your children's mother when you lay down with her. And same thing with you ladies. You're choosing your children's father when you lay down with him. Because you never know what might be the outcome of that encounter. There's always a chance that there may be a baby. And excuse me, let me see why you said that. Also, you do not need the system to tell you how to raise your child. And I, I, I but noticed, hold on, I'm, you I'm going off. my thought, and, mm -mm -mm. and you're going to have to say that for because, a minute. No, but, but you hold just on. said no, was I, but pick it back about on this. laying down. But, pick, but you, you're going to make me lose my thought. You okay, don't well, have my ahead, mind go ahead, go ahead. I got so much stuff in my mind. So you don't, you choose your own baby daddy and baby mama, or mother and father, okay? But those who don't like to use that. I play with my baby daddy and I call him baby daddy, and he's fine with that, but mother and father, you choose them. And so when in choosing them, you're choosing the person that's gonna teach your kids, if y'all don't work, you're choosing the person who's gonna teach your kid to continue to love your father, even though we're not together. Continue to love your father, even though he can't be at every event. Continue to love your father. And see, or you're choosing the person that say, your father ain't hitting no, on no, nothing. No, no, your no. father is a dog. Don't do you're that. choosing her. So that's why you should know who you have children by. Mm -hmm. Fathers, okay? Know who you have children by because you still want a baby's mother, a child's mother that is going to teach her to love you, even through your difficulties, even through your faults and your downfalls and your misfortunes, you want a woman that's going to say, you still got to love your father. Mm -hmm. You still got to call your father. Like I told my son, I said, did you call your dad this, this morning for Father's Day? He tells me, I'm going to text him. No, you don't text him. You call him and wish him a happy Father's Day. And why I can't just text him? And I, Because he's your father. He's not one of your friends. He's your father. You call your father and say happy Father's Day. And me and my baby's father is not together or this, that, the other. But I make him respect him. And I will call him later on and say, did your son call you today? And if he didn't call him, he will before the day is out. Now, go ahead. And yeah, the, the, that's what I, I wanted to say. Just because it didn't work out with you and the father doesn't mean you have to bash him. You know, um, my first husband, my children, he wasn't a good husband. To, we wasn't a good fit for each other. Mm -hmm. But he was a good father to those kids. Right. You know, and, and my husband now, even he, you know, you know, gave him a compliment to say, thank you for helping take care of my children. That's what a real man did. Thank you for helping put my kids through college, mm -hmm. you know, on what your GI Bill. I appreciate that. You know, so you don't bash the guy because it didn't work out between right. y'all, you know. 
and like I said, and I know I, I'm going to go off the script a little bit, just a little bit. You don't need, because no one told you how to lay down and get a baby. So I don't feel you need someone to tell you how to take care of your baby. You don't need someone to make you pay child support. And I'm not knocking child support, don't get me wrong. But when you make a decision to lay down without protection, you know there's a possibility that, that a child can come into play. So you making a um, confirmation, so to speak, that if this happens, we're going to take care of this child together, whether we're together or not. That, that's all I'm saying. Well, that sounds all good and everything until something come up and that um, he got a bill or something needs to be paid. And then he's like, well, if I just take from here, and which here used to be child support, and I go and pay this bill, I'll take care of him later on the back end. See, that right there, um, this is a whole other story. I know, it's a I whole other story because, like... see, you're going to get me into that and I don't tolerate it. Everybody, everybody goes on child support. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why. But they don't need the system to have them yeah sometimes they do support. sometimes they do because my my baby dad i understand that too but no I, no no I, uh -uh. i'm not gonna i can't teach that because i'm telling you what happens is you get dependent on what he's sending you i've been through this you get dependent on what he's sending you okay and then when he have a a, a mishap or something mm -hmm. he's gonna take from what he's sending you because there's nothing saying he has to send it to you mm -hmm. and then you're gonna be dependent on that money and you can't do something like maybe pay child care because what he's sending you is probably only worth child care mm -hmm. and then he doesn't send it that time because he had a mishap or something and nigga your money no i don't need a mishaps i need to make sure this is regulated Cause so you get one but sometimes mishap. you have to have a backup plan. Well, my for, backup for plan, my backup those. plan was child support, and, you, and 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 like I said, she done got me on another topic now. My backup plan was child support, and my baby father understands that. And and, and let me tell you something about him though, because even with child support, they don't have to pay. Even with child support, they can miss have mishaps and, and pull for the money. But I thank you, baby dad. <laughs> I thank you so much. <laughs> This is personal to me. You are always on time. And you don't miss a birthday. You don't miss Christmas. I just love you. Okay, and that's all good. <laughs> I, but I just have to love defend you, baby those daddy. ones who are obligated to pay day child to my baby support. Dad. <laughs> and they have to, how can you pay child, okay, pay child support. The system gives them such a big amount of, to pay at times, okay? How can they have a living or make a living for themselves if they have to pay child support? It makes it okay, hard, let, and let I have the time. They're going to go out to the easy <laughs> way and try so to make money. And say, I'm, I'm just so wrong honest. with you because I'm not even if they lock that. them up. Even if they lock them up for child support, guess what? You still ain't getting Okay, let me, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on, sis. Hold on, let big sister teach you something. Go, go ahead, big sister. The system gives you child support payments based on what you're making. Hold up. If you choose to Quit your job, and you know you got this uh, child support fee. That's on you. No, no quit your job. I'm not saying they quitting the job. I'm saying if it's too, sometimes child support can take so much that these they how can mm -hmm. they make a living mm -hmm. off this? Mm -hmm. How can they no, make a living for themselves if they have such a I mean, big amount of child support? Listen, I'm gonna tell you, I paid child support before. Okay. Okay. With my first husband, paid child support each time that check. Every week, that money coming out that check, it, you know, it made it hard for me to pay my bills and to pay my but rent and so forth and so on. So guess what? So many we bills. compromised. We became we became joint joint custody. So we take care of our kids Wait, together. What? Okay, that's fine. But my whole thing is, I don't mean no harm since you must know they gonna feel sorry for you because the thing is, <laughs> you see, you see what I'm saying? The thing <laughs> is, child support. The, the, at the least, they would go minimum wage. They would base your child support on minimum wage at the least. Now, is it child support's fault that, or is it that child's fault that you had kids and you couldn't take care, you couldn't afford to take care of them babies? It's not child support fault, and it's not that child fault. That child still has to be provided for. But what I'm saying is, okay, take this for example. You go to the system and you get two hundred and ten dollars a month. Okay, two hundred and ten dollars a month from them. That don't take care of your bills. No, but that, it, that it helps do... with child care. See, this, this is what y'all don't understand. That's, I'm glad you said that. 
Because most of the time, the mother still has the primary responsibility of taking care of that child. You don't get that much a lot of times for child support. Now, me, I was an exception. I was an exception. I'm talking about the system. But hold on, hold on, hold on. I was an exception because I chose my baby daddy. But the thing is, a lot of times you don't get that much, right? Mm -hmm. And so, say that they tell this man you got to pay $210 for this child every month, right? Mm -hmm. The woman still has the bulk of the responsibility. And I understand that that's not what I'm saying, sis. What I'm saying is when they go to social service, okay? Okay. And they apply for what is it, uh, TANF? Um, or, or so? What's that? Who's that? I, I don't. I think it's a check. I don't know. Okay. okay. That check two hundred and ten a month, right? Okay. But yet they're charging the father the child child support, right? So when they get it, guess what? All that money, a uh, most majority of that money is going back to the the, the right. state. Yeah, because they're paying for your child every month. See, they're but they only paying steady. bits and pieces. They only paying two hundred and ten. Not two hundred and ten. Not what well, is they gonna pay do back? for them? Well, I mean, listen. That's what I'm just saying. Y'all get on they, one accord and take that, care of your children. Yeah, together. but that's what they're paying. See, you know, to this to a whole different level. But if it's that's what they're father. paying, that's what they're paying. And yes, the father got to pay the state back. But at least the mother's getting a steady check. And this is what I'm talking about. It's all about getting a steady check. It's all about getting a steady income so that you can make decisions for your child based on what is coming in. So, no, I don't feel sorry about no child support and all that stuff. Now, I do have a problem when they was taking away your driver's license because you need to be able to, to drive get to and get to work. I do have a problem with that. Shame on Virginia. Spank on. But other than that, I, I mean, you're supposed to take care of your child. And, and I thank God that my baby daddy understood that. He was on time every month and then some. And I just love you to pieces, baby. <laughs> See what I'm yes, just, we love you too. We love thank you for taking care of my nephew. <laughs> so, so, but, you know, but the fathers, let me tell you something. Even through your struggle, even if you can't afford your child support, pay something. Pay something. Don't just drop your kids. Don't just not try. And uh, I, you know, I'm a stickler because I didn't have to struggle when it came to child support. I didn't have to. The, the, my baby father paid me. But what I'm saying is, even if you can't, you pay something. Good faith payments. Mm -hmm. Letting these mothers and these kids know that you love your kids and you're going to take care of regardless. I you know, when, when my baby father told me, he said, yeah, you know, I got so and so many kids and I took care That's of all of them. And I'm going to take care of this one too. And yes, honey, he did take care of her. He did take care of her. And, I'm, and my baby is almost um, out of school. Mm -mm. My baby's almost out of school. And he um, did what he said he was going to do. And for me, I, I just have so much respect for him as a father. And um, that's just how it be. Nobody better not say nothing about my baby then. I'm going to tell you that right now. Might get slapped. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... So, and this is what I'm saying, regardless, regardless of what you're going through, what your situation is, your kids are not going to remember that child support money. So, I don't know why she got me off of my track of Father's Day, but your kids are not going to remember what you paid for child support. All they're going to remember is the time that you spent with them. They're going to remember the attention that you showed them. They're going to remember the, the lessons that you taught me. Now, one thing I can tell you that my daddy did teach me, and, and, and I treasure it to this day, because I was a fighter when I was younger. I would fight boys, I would fight girls. It didn't really matter to me. And uh, one time I fought this boy, and we was fighting. I mean, I was doing really good. Anybody that was at that fight, they know I was tearing it up. And what happened was he was strong, so he picked me up and just dropped me. And when he dropped me, my head hit the back of the stage. What was that crowd up? My head hit the back of the stage, and, um, I had a migraine. I had, um, I guess, a concussion, you would call it. And when my father came to see me, because he did come to see me, because he did love me, he came to see me, and he was like, don't you ever fight a guy, a boy, again, hands up, you know? He, and he taught me what to do that day when a man put his hands on me. And so, I mean, I treasure that, because that was a lesson that I needed to know, because just suppose I was one of those women or girls that let men fight them. You see what I'm saying? Or 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 was afraid to fight back because he was a boy. Mm -hmm. No, dad taught me what to do. He taught me what to do so y'all don't put your hands on the neck. Mm -hmm. Cause but daddy already told me what to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So but that's the kind of stuff 
that you need to hear from your father. How to protect yourself. How to refrain from being a, a, a victim of abuse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I would never say my dad didn't love me. It was just the fundamentals of being a father he didn't um, have with me. He didn't show me. And it's okay because I still love him. You know why I still love him? Because he married a woman that taught me to love him. He married a baby mama that taught us to love our father in spite of. And that's what we did. You see what I'm saying? So he, he didn't he didn't get punished like some of you going to do. Some of you going to get punished. Some of you going to get straight dragged by your kids. Remember that. Your kids, I'm telling you, remember you're going to go to an age where you're going to need your children. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. all jokes aside, and, and that's when you're going to, you know, if you push them away or you're not there for them, guess what? They're not going to be there for yeah. you when, in your old age. Uh -uh. Just... Yeah, some of some of y'all are gonna get punished if you don't listen to some of these tips that we're trying to give you. And the main tip is to be there for your kid, even if you can't give them money, still be there. I would rather my father say, "Baby, they don't have nothing to give you, uh, but I'm here for you. You need me to take you somewhere. You need me to take you to, you know, anywhere. I would rather that than to not show up, you know. And and so because when you when you don't show up, fathers. You, you, they don't invite you anymore. They stop inviting you. They, they stop including you. And you don't want that because when you get older and perhaps alone by yourself, no more running the women and no more, you know, and no more, no more, you're going to want your kids around. And guess what? They done got so used to you not being around. They done got so used to not having you that you just not included in their day-to-day -day activities. And so for a long time, I didn't celebrate Father's Day. And so what happened was, you know, you know, after much prayer, my connection to God, I changed, you know, because I'm like, regardless, he was a part of the process. He was a part of the process to create this queen that y'all see before y'all right now, you know. He was a part of that. Without him, there would be no me. So I still got to respect him as my father as part of the process if nothing else and so now that's why I'm always trying to do something for fathers because we have to still acknowledge them for their role in our lives we have to we can't just say oh my dad wasn't there he was a daddy but if your dad wasn't there that one time you wouldn't be here so at least acknowledge him for that you know mm -hmm. and I just you know so I had to it had to just turn on me. I had to get a, a, a different view, a different outlook. And, and like I said, my mother, thank God for her, we was raised to love our daddy. And he's still daddy. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of my past, I don't, I don't hold my past against him. None of it. But there are just certain things that are, are un, what you call it, um, non-negotiable. There are certain things that I can't get past, you know what I'm saying? Like the fact that he can't teach me right now. There's nothing right now that I can learn from him as a father. And that, and that I shouldn't be that way, but that's just how it is. Because that's where I, that's where the buck stops, you know, from from my from the, my my upbringing. I, I feel like at almost 50 years old now, I don't want you're not gonna teach me anything else. You're not gonna teach me now. You should have taught me that when I was younger. So that that's the limitation that I have with him. And as soon as he started trying to teach me something, that, I, I, mm, mm. that's something she taught me a long time ago. I ain't trying to hear it from you. Then just trying to get you married, man. Oh, he told me one day that it's going to be an act of Congress, an act of God for me to get married. And he definitely said that. That was years ago. He was like, Lord have mercy. That's going to be an act. But, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in my future. I tell you what, when I do get married, all y'all going to be invited. Y'all better know it. You're going to be invited one way or another, in virtually or in person. You're going to be invited to my, at least to the reception. I may have to get married outside by the time I keep inviting everybody to my wedding that's not yet foreseeable. <laughs> so
So what else you got to say before we um, get out of here? Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. That's all she got to say. But I'll tell y'all what, you know, keep being fathers. Do what you know. My mother always said some people can only love you. Well, she would say people can only love you the best that they know how to love you. And so I'm asking you fathers out there to continue to love your kid one way or another. Show them love regardless of what you can do for them or give to them. Just show them love and let them know straight up, man, dad can't do this. I'm trying hard, but I love you. Tell them. Tell your kids that you love them and show them just by your presence. You know, fight through the fact that the girl don't want you to see your kids. No, that's unacceptable. We're not going to have that. I don't care who you're seeing, but my kids are my kids. I want to see my children. Give me some time with my kids and I'll leave you alone. Do not let these women buy. We're not letting you see your kids because it's not making an effect on the way the kids see them. It's making an effect on the way the kids see you. And when you grow, when they grow up, you don't want them to see you as an absent father or a father who just didn't care because that's going to be the narrative even though it's not that way. That's how they're going to see you. So fight to be in your kid's life. Fight. Give them the the guidance that they need as a father, your wisdom. Talk to them. I'm telling you from experience, okay? I'm telling you because I don't want any other girl to feel the way I felt when I was young. I do not want any other girl to be disconnected from her father the way I am. You know, I love my dad, but we there's no doubt on in my mind that we're we're um, just not disconnected. I mean, we are. I wish it could be, but the moment he started trying to teach me or tell me, mm -mm, there goes that clink. And what do you say to the women who children have lost their father, sis? Agreed. Death. Mm -hmm. Lost their father. Death. Yes. What do I say to them? Teach them the good things about their father. Teach them the good things about their father. Make sure that they love them. I mean, make sure that they understood that their father loved them. Tell them that if their father was still here, you know, this is how he would treat you. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't dog the man in his death. Don't do that because that's not going to be good for you. You teach the kids positive things um, in, in about their father if, if, if that's the case, you know. What, what you going to lose from doing that? Love is everything. Love conquers all. So make sure you teach your kids to love love them regardless of how you feel about them lady you teach your kids to love their dad let them see for themselves how they are my mom always said you'll see for yourself i'm not going to teach you nothing but positive things about your daddy you will see for yourself and she always gave us an opportunity to see people for the, ourselves and that's what i do now through out life people that you know um, you can't let me put it this way you can't tell me anything about anybody because I'm going to observe for myself. I'm going to know they're good and they're bad and they're ugly. And I might not go around town talking about it. I'll keep it to myself, but I will know. You might say this person is a good person, but I might know the truth about from my point of view. And I'll keep it to myself, but um, you, you're not going to, um, you know, I'm about to say something ugly. But you're not going to um, throw dirt in my face and tell me it's raindrops, okay? <laughs> So, you know, always learn for yourself. Always learn for yourself. Absolutely. And listen, I just wanted to give you guys those tips. The first tip, always be in your child's life. The second tip, do not allow a woman to keep you away from your child, whether it be the child's mother or your significant other. And third, always show love regardless of whether you have the finances to give your child you always show love you make sure that child know that you love them i don't care if you have to go to a secondhand store and get a prom gown you show your daughter that you love her the best way that you can and you're capable of i'm telling you if you listen to me she will always be your baby she will always look up to her daddy do not let her go. 
Do not let her learn about being on her own because before you know it, she's going to be too far gone and it's not going to be a good thing for her and she might not be able to recover, okay? It might lead her to something else. Mm -hmm. Be there. Advice and love. And validate. And validate and teach her how to validate. Because can't nobody tell me nothing about me. Anything about me. And this is why I can sit here and I can boost your head up so high and you will walk out that door thinking that you are God's gift to everybody <laughs> in this city. Because my mother taught me how to validate myself from the pain that I was going through by not having my daddy. So I'm encouraging you daddies to stay in your child's lives. Okay? Stay in your children's lives. You would not regret it. And they're going to love you to death. Meaning, if something happens to you, they're going to be there to take care of you until the Lord should say, it's time for you to come home. God loves you. I love you. Make sure you love yourself. Love your children. And go on and love someone else until we shall meet again next week. What you talking about? <laughs>